Welcome everybody to our teacher self-care talk. We are so excited to have you guys. Today we're talking about protecting your peace during a pandemic. And before we start, I want everybody on the panel to introduce yourself. I'm Francesca, owner of the Teacher Self-Care Conference and the Educators Room. Erica? I'm Erica Wertherly. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and founder of Teaching with Mental Health in Mind. Thank you. And where are you, where are you calling from? Jacksonville, oh. Florida. Okay, and I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, guys. All right, Meredith? Hi, everyone. I'm Meredith Newland of the Transform Teacher, and I'm calling in from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Nita Creekmore. I am in Loganville, Georgia, and I am an instructional coach, and I also do love Teach Bless on Instagram. Absolutely. So thank you guys for allowing us to have this conversation. Um, and I thought it was really important because so many teachers right now are getting models from their school districts, calling them back into school. Um, and before we kind of get into that, what talk us through like your mental health during um, this pandemic. I know for me, like I was initially like very happy, like, oh, we get to be home. And then I was like, oh, my kids are here. Oh, I still have work to. Oh, all the news, all the you know, um, racial and just like, it was just a lot on my brain. So like, how has your mental health been during this time period? Well, for me, um, and I'll just go first. Um, but for me, initially I was kind of like you, Fran, I was like, okay, we got a little break. And I thought it was going to last maybe like a week. <laughs> and I was like, maybe it'll go into spring break and then we go back to school and finish the year. Yeah. But my whole world started my wall started closing in because I started mm. noticing, okay, you know, like teachers needed me a little bit more. Um, I didn't have a space at my house. So I have four kids. So my, my mm. son was in one room doing digital learning. My other daughter was in another room doing digital learning. And I have a six year old, my other daughter. And then Mike is my husband. He was, it was just a lot going on and making sure that the kids were getting what they need to get as, as well as me doing my job as an educator, as an instructional coach, that was very challenging for me. So like I, there was night, there was times when I just had to go outside and walk and like just take a breather because I felt like the walls were really, really closing in. It was a lot. Um, How naive of us to think that we were only going to be out of school for like two weeks. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, I'm not. I'm not teaching anymore. I've, I'm a okay. former but I still work with schools. Yeah. So even even though I'm not teaching and I wasn't in school every day, there's a school that I work with that I provide counseling for the students. Mm -hmm. So like you were saying, it's like, okay, we have spring break. So we had spring break. And then they, they were like, okay, well, we'll do another week. And then by the end of that week, they were like, okay, well, now it'll be the end of April before we come back to school and then it wasn't until the end of april so the whole time it's like okay well what what next you know so it's yeah the unknown was i think frustrating to a lot of people and then kind of um watching people kind of scramble like to put things together y yes you have your lesson plans but you're used to teaching it a certain way and things like that so because most teachers people were kind of reaching out to me basically like I'm stressed the heck out. <laughs> like, can I just, can you just, you got time to talk? <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. to listen. Yeah. Um, and I think just being that um, safe space for some people mm -hmm. kind of helped them get through the end of the school year, giving them somebody that they can just vent to about everything going on. Because as teachers, you know, during this time and even in the classroom, teachers are required to be on all the yeah. time. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to be stressed out. You're not allowed yeah. to be experiencing different difficult feelings, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, holding that space for some of the educators that needed to just like vent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Meredith, how, how about you? How did you feel like, how did you handle your mental health? Cause you had just moved, right? Like adjusting yeah. to a new school. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been about a year. It's flown by. Um, but I just remember that first week of official online learning and uh, it was like just trying to catch fish like, oh, I caught one. I caught a student who will respond. Yeah. I teach at um, a non-traditional school and okay. so a lot of our students were busy trying to make ends meet for their families and uh, 
technology was intimidating to them. And um, they're traditionally known as at-risk youth. And so this was just really stressing them out. A few of them had like six family members. And every now and then we'd have like a win and we'd be like, yeah, we, we got one to show up for the uh, Google. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get like a little notification on my phone that my child, my first grader's uh, teacher wanted an assignment uploaded in Blooms. And I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if yeah. you can relate. I bet, I bet you can all relate. But mm -hmm. uh, just like the struggle between teaching and motherhood was really, yeah. I was like, I'm going to go crazy if something doesn't change. So Yeah. And I was kind of the same way because it was all these platforms. And then my middle schooler, she had never really done virtual school. Mm -hmm. So she was like trying to listen to the teacher live and then trying to help ask me for help. And then it was just confusing. So I had to like set up a time, like we had to have real school. Cause I was like, okay, from this time you do this. And I had to stagger it. And then I had to tell my five-year-old, okay, you don't do any work until after four o'clock. Like you just go play and watch TV because I have to work and help them. And then from like four to six, I worked with her, but it was a lot. I was exhausted. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How, how yeah. have your, and I, what, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I heard a lot of teachers say I'm, I'm more drained now than when I was in the classroom because yeah. of having to balance all of the different things, especially if you do have your own students that are <laughs> that are doing the work as well. So you're teaching, you have your own students. Some people have their spouse at home with them and they're not used to working in the same space as their spouse. So it's a lot of, you know, it was like uncharted territory for yeah. so many people. Yeah. And it, and for me, it was almost like no one really understood because I kept hearing people say, oh, well, you know, teachers like just get with it. And I'm like, that's not how school really works. So I really had to lean on like my teacher friends to be like, OK, I'm not crazy. Like this isn't just me. What has kind of helped right. you guys through the pandemic? Like how have you kind of processed what's gone on? For, for me, I stopped, I had to stop looking at it like digital learning and look at it like mm. crisis learning. Like once yeah. I started thinking, okay, this is not a digital learning model. This is not, you know, home learning or, or like, you know, the same that someone would do if they were, you know, teaching their child at home. This is crisis learning. And so I had to, like, for me, I had to be like, give yourself grace, Nita. Like, I would, oh, yeah. there were times when I'd be sitting at the computer all day and not even use the bathroom. Like it's crazy. Like yeah. I was at the desk all day. And so I had to just say, give yourself grace. I had to continuously tell the mm -hmm. teachers that I work with, give yourself grace. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like if it's a day where you're saying, okay, I'm only gonna be on, are these my hours of operation? And because I have to, I right. have other kids, like, cause now daycare is gone. Now I have yeah. all my kids at home. When I was talking yeah. about teachers that had babies at home, like that yeah. they had to take care of, you know? So I had to look at it for me. I had to switch my mind and saying, this is crisis teaching. This is teaching mm. in the pandemic and crisis. You know yeah. what I mean? And that is so different right. than like a digital learning model. You know Absolutely. I mean? mm -hmm. And I like that mode, like crisis, crisis teaching, because it takes some of the um, expectation that, because parents were really expecting like a full virtual model. And mm -hmm. what I had to explain to them was that in, in most schools, you might have a digital person, mm -hmm. but depending on the school, you may or may not have been able to work with that person. That person may have been cut. Right. So you, you know, it's just different. Meredith, I think you were going to say something. Uh, no, I was just agreeing with you. And uh, I love what Nita said about uh, give yourself grace and accept that this is not normal. And yeah, it's mm -hmm. not like a full blown, virtual model like we had to change your expectations so yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely erica what what did and you you know i know you're not in go ahead no ask a question <laughs> <laughs> i was saying that i know you said you're not in the classroom but kind of what did you have to switch your brain to because you're used to going in and working with students or teachers how did you have to switch to kind of get used to that well for me, it was making sure that I was more active in my online platforms. Yeah. And what that led to is people reaching out to me that I, I don't even necessarily know personally. Absolutely. Um, 
you know what I do. So they contact me, whether it's through Messenger or maybe they go to my website and they reach me that way. Um, where I kind of got on a few calls and did mostly like kind of consultation work because um, yeah. it wasn't actually counseling um, where it's anything necessarily long term, but just more so of giving some specific advice. And like I said mm -hmm. earlier, I'm just allowing people to say, oh, my gosh, what do I have to do to not go crazy? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because this is this is so different. And um, I like the fact that you use that term crisis mode because it was. And um, so like some of the advice that I was giving was making sure that you're maintaining, creating and then maintaining some kind of schedule. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Fran, you said okay, the, the older kids do the work during normal school hours, the younger <laughs> ones later. And you know, that's the kind of stuff that I had to tell other people. I'm like, if you can't manage teaching all of your kids at the same time while you're teaching, set up a schedule. Okay, you're going to work from this time to this time. You're going to work from this time to this time. Mm -hmm. You know, here's my work hours. <laughs> um, yeah. And you really have to be patient. You know, people had to be really be patient with themselves because I think um, a lot of people just assumed that they'd be able to work in the same mode they were used to working in and you really had to yeah. switch gears. Yeah. Um, and I, then I also think, you know, with this more than any other time, you really, you know, being that most people were safer at home in Florida is what they called it. Mm -hmm. But um, but making sure that you cut carve out that space for yourself. Yeah. So whether yeah. that taking a walk first thing in the morning before the kids wake up or, you know, whatever, making sure that you have that specific time. I know, you know, when my kids were all little, sometimes that looked like locking yourself in the bathroom, but, <laughs> but, you know, making sure you are out sometime to just be by yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you, the students I worked with, I was, you know, checking in with the students to make sure that they were okay because they were missing out on their friends, yeah. you know, having those social interactions. And that was, that was a big deal for a lot of them. I have to ask, you know, we always say like pressure um, builds diamonds, right? Have you like, have you had a kind of a, an awakening during this time? Because I feel like for me, like I needed this. I, I need even, even if it wasn't a break, I needed not to have to drive to work every day um, and fight traffic and mentally like prepare myself for that. Did you feel like this time gave you like a mental awakening for you to like, come out on the other side different because for me you know a lot of people know this but my father died in january it's very unexpected um and so i was like struggling with like I, I didn't even take off time to grieve like it was just i was back to back to work and so for me it gave me a lot of time for me even though i'm at home and i'm working but it gave me time to kind of reflect and refine some things that I know I, I needed to change. Did anybody else have that happen? Like, did y'all go through something like that? Or not even like something like that, but did you have like a resurgence or an awakening? Um, for us, like we have a big family. So we stay young on the go. I mean, I think Fran knows that. Like we're on the go with volleyball, we're on the go with basketball, then we got dance. And, and I think we had gotten to a point, like our schedule on our refrigerator was filled to the brim. I mean, when I say filled to the brim, it was ridiculously filled to the brim. And I think like, unfortunately the COVID-19 put us in the house, but it also gave us perspective. And it also um, allowed us to slow down and think about the things that are needed, but think about things that we do every day that's just minute and we don't have to have. And so yeah. it was really like, a, an awakening in a sense of our family of the slow down time to just slow our lives down and get back to the to the to the nuts and bolts you know and for us like for me as a family and me as a mom it allowed me to spend time with my kids that you know usually we spend it all together all six but there's times when I could just be with one child and then like you know be sitting with them and like there's little things that you notice about you know especially if you have a big family about that one child you're like Oh my goodness, like, you know, like, I didn't know that about you. And that's so crazy as a mother. But when you're going, 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 you're checking boxes. And so it allows yeah. you to slow down and to stop checking boxes and just enjoy the moment. Cool. 
I love that you said checking boxes because I also have a big family. We, I have four children. You have four children, right? Yeah, we have the same. And so it's almost like you're just you're you're just trying to manage the manage the herd. You're like moving them, just every, like <laughs> sitting and yes. really processing. Like this is what I do as a mother. I just for me, I couldn't. Mm-hmm. So I I really like was like, oh, my child does this. Oh, yeah. my child does. This. Oh, you know. And I I kind of was like. Mm-hmm. It made me kind of sit and be like, it's okay for you not to be doing something. Right, right. Exactly. You know, I was listening to, to Chris M. I always say Edmund, Edmund, I always say it's wrong. Emden? Emden, yeah, Emden. <laughs> and he was talking about like using this time to really get to know his child, um, like his academic, on the academic level. Like, so that you, sh- mm-hmm. you can be able to tell your teacher what type of learning your child is, what type of, you know, yeah, that's how it is. And so it was really good um, about him talking about that. Cause I was like, yeah, because I've, I've noticed little things about my, my own child that is best things that help them as a learner that I had to mm-hmm. learn by being their, their teacher. Cause I had the teacher hat on, you know what I'm saying? So that's was another thing that really helped during um, this time. Meredith, I know you have, I don't know if you have as many as me and Nita, but what did you realize about your children being home? Well, I got in trouble with my daughter's first grade teacher. Uh, trouble, not real trouble. But yeah. I was feeling very proud of myself for helping her with some math. We spent two hours on it. And the teacher called me two hours later and she was like, uh, Eleanor scored like really high on this uh, quiz or whatever. For And I was like, yeah, she. we worked through it together. It took us a long time. She was like, she was supposed to do that all on her own. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm really good at math, and that just confirmed that I thought my math skills were at the point, but no. So, um, but I, I, I got a glimpse about I got a glimpse into my children's teachers, and I teach high school, and uh, my my four year old and my six year old just watching how hard their teachers were working and just how much they cared and how devoted they were. It just gave me such a renewed appreciation for teachers. Yeah. Um, how hard they all work. Yeah. I said that too. I said, this should teach parents how hard teachers work. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I said this at the beginning, I said, this will probably help transform education in a good way mm-hmm. because parents are now seeing that these standardized tests, it doesn't it doesn't matter like it's not really measuring what kids know right. and also right. I, I said I think this will cause parents to even advocate harder for their child's teacher because it's like a lot of parents I was hearing from was like oh my god I didn't realize it was this hard like and I'm like okay now put 30 more kids in the classroom or if you're 100, <laughs> put 145 more kids in the classroom and now voila, you have the life of the teacher yeah. I have to ask what you know you know, this resurgence, you looking, you finding out new things about your children. What have you reconciled about your teaching? Like, have you, have you sat back and really examined like who you are as a teacher and what you do next when you go back this upcoming year? Well, I'm, I'm not fully in the classroom. Uh, you know, I work with teachers, um, but I can look at it from the sense of like a coaching perspective, like for me with teachers. Um, there's there's things that I began to look at and advocate for, like like especially during this time, you notice like a lot of kids that just are don't have like so like we went to full digital, and then we found oh my gosh like our kids don't have Wi-Fi like although they have a lap now we've given them a Chromebook but there's no access to Wi-Fi so that's a whole right. other level of you know equity that we had we had to relook at just as a school. Um, as a school district. And I think a lot of districts were in that place where it's like, oh my goodness, we didn't realize that so many kids um, were without, you know, as far as digital. And so I think for me coming back, it's again, looking at those types of things in our school, you know, looking at um, things that, that may not just be right there at the surface and that we have to kind of dig deeper as far as our kids and how um, equitable we are across the board um, in our school. Erica, what do you think? Or like, and I know you don't. Um, 
you're not in the classroom anymore, but like, how has this changed how you view your practice or? Yeah, one of the things that um, that I've been talking to people about with, you know, it's kind of like for, for teachers, things slowed down as far as, um, you know, places you could go and things like that. But there was a steep learning curve for figuring out how to do everything online and remotely. Um, so finding that, finding the strengths in that, like as you slow down, it gives you a chance to kind of reflect, like, what am I doing really, really good? And what do I just feel like I suck at? You know what I mean? And not necessarily, you know, I'm a, I'm a strength, I focus on strengths. So pretty much everything I do is strength based. So it's like, okay, knowing this is what I'm really good at. So if you're really good at putting together lessons digitally online, okay, so when we come back together, I'm I can be the support to help put this together. But somebody else may have a different strength on something that I suck at. So then you can kind of identify who you need to be working with so you can balance each other out as a as a staff, as a team. Um, when it comes to whatever model we end up going to once school starts back, is focusing on, okay, this I know I'm really good at and I can get in a rhythm with it. Um, and then finding out who has the resources for the things that I can't. Because one of the things that I, what one of the things I end up finding is people tend to focus on their weaknesses and they kind of get hung up on that part. Mm -hmm. And then they feel like they're not doing a great job when in fact they are because they're doing really good at what they are really good at. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you need that encouragement um, of being able to focus on, okay, where are my strengths lie in this moment? Mm -hmm. And I think like I said, it's kind of a combination of slow down, but steep curve, you know, in that balance, figuring out, okay, who am I? How is this going to work for me? Mm -hmm. Um and in the meantime, until we know better, enjoy the summer. Yeah. You're <laughs> no, right. don't just jump straight back into work mode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think you said something important about enjoying the summer because yeah. I've had to tell teacher friends who are trying to plan all summer and, you know, they're on all these teacher groups and talking about what they're going to do. And I'm like, we don't know how we're starting back. Enjoy your summer. Like, take long right. walks, stay up late. Binge on Netflix, live your life. Because at the end of the day, you can plan for face to face or you can plan for virtual. And a school district might say, Hold on, let me give you another option. And so you just don't know. And so instead of being worried and being stressed, use the remaining time of the summer to kind of get your life together. Mm -hmm. What have you done during the summer to kind of do that for you got for yourself? Like, what have you done to help you kind of live your life this summer? Well, for, for me, I, I'm trying to read more because I, I miss out on so much reading during the year, like just reading just regular books, like just regular books. <laughs> um, not saying I'm not reading anything for my job. I probably not, don't need to do that, but I'm, I've been reading a lot. And so that's been really um, like a woosah for me. Um, I've been trying not to be so much on social media um, because I feel like when I watch it or when I look at it or watching the news, it sometimes my attitude goes from a great attitude to now I'm like angry and pissed and wanting to talk to them, you know, about what's going on in the world. And, and so I had to kind of slow that down a little bit. Um, just little things like that, Fran, like I just had to just kind of take a step back and do me for a little bit. Yeah. I, I echo that Nita. Um, I feel like um, getting out in nature just helps me get reconnected with power greater than myself, and you know everything feels when so. When I have wild. that in common, I think there it is. What again? You with you with me on that? Is that what you said? I have that in common. Being in nature—that's yeah. like <laughs> on Facebook on the beach, Erica. I love that picture of you that you shared. Yeah, it just makes you feel like you get reconnected to your soul. And yeah, yes, that's true. Getting away from it all and all that. Yeah, um, that's, that's I think mean, yeah. nature has helped, and also like I've made because what I realized is during the in my my five year old is right here, guys. So the world <laughs> it doesn't stop. But um, <laughs> so I've had to like because during the school year, all I did was eat on the run, eat on the run, eat on the run, eat on the run, 
So now I'm like up walking three, four miles a day. I'm mm-hmm. up like in the morning, I'm taking some time to like an hour to like decompress and get my thoughts together and drink tea. So I'm mm-hmm. actually getting back to like things that make me calm and collected and I don't feel like I'm running on the go. And because of that, that's helping me be able to kind of process everything. Cause it's a lot mm-hmm. um, to watch the news and just see, you know, black men being killed on the, like, it's just a lot. And I can't mm-hmm. get, yeah. so I can go back and kind of process that. All right. Someone said, Oh my goodness. I need to hear that. Teacher guilt is already setting. Mm-hmm. Me to go back into August. The, Diana, like, look, teacher guilt, Throw it away. Don't do anything because every meeting that I go to, that's right, Nita. It's like this. I'm not doing it. I can't. <laughs> but every right. meeting I go to, no one knows. I have a friend mm-hmm. who works for the CDC, and she's like, the thing with this disease is that it continually is mutating. She was like, so what we don't know, we really don't know until it happens. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if the CDC is telling me that, yes, I can't do anything else. No. All right. Somebody else said, unfortunately, right. I can't enjoy the summer. I'm on two committees to plan for the 2021 school year, you know, on Zoom meetings for safety to plan for in person instruction. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yeah. you gotta, so I say, in between those Zoom meetings, you better go outside, enjoy nature, get you an adult beverage. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I just know like all the plans you're making, they can be done in a minute. Like yeah. someone can say, Oh, we don't we're not doing that anymore. And then you're like, Well, I planned all this. So Elena, we hear you. Yeah. You said I appreciate I learned to appreciate red wine more. Oh my <laughs> dog. I need I need to learn how to um pick wine to drink so that I'll relax. So I need to, that's something I need to learn how to do. Yeah, you gotta go wine tasting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and my husband has plenty of it. I just never drink any of it. Um, <laughs> um, you know what else has really been really good for me? Yoga, like yoga, practicing mm-hmm. yoga. Um, it has been so restorative, y'all. Like I mm-hmm. just, it has been so great. So just doing that too has been really, yeah. really good. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, somebody right. go ahead. What you say, Meredith? Go ahead. I agree with Tony. Yeah. Said, <laughs> right. Yes. Deal with personal goals and issues. Try as much to avoid the subject of school. What kind of personal goals do you guys have this summer um, that goes back to you? What are some of the things that you maybe have? Well, Fran, I want to pick your brain because I'm trying to finish my next book. And I know that you've got so many books that you've written. So <laughs> what's the secret to getting it all churned out? Like, that's my. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys my work hours on myself, mm-hmm. um, because I still work during the summer, is I work from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Kids are laid down. Kids are asleep. I'm not mm-hmm. telling you what they work for me. Um, especially like I'm writing a dissertation, like I have hours where I need the kids to leave me alone. And sometimes it's where I, you know, they go and they're outside riding their bikes and my husband has them and I just sit in the house and kind of hunker down. But I just find time like not to talk about writing, not to think about writing, but like I put yeah. the, the paper and I write and I don't, mm-hmm. I don't edit it. I just write. And then mm-hmm. that way I come back, I look at it because I find out I have found that if I think about it too long or if I say, let me schedule it or mm-hmm. if I have this big plan, it doesn't mm-hmm. happen. So I might as well just do it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, Ann says, no one knows at all. They're trying to open the economy, not protect those who need the most protection. Yeah. And I think we're seeing that with schools opening back up. You know, my yeah. daughter who was right here. She's a heart patient. And so. People are like, are you going to send them to school? No, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't send her to school. Not with all of them. So, um, the answer she dies into twisted humor. Right, right, right. Jennifer says, I have been able to do more yoga now in the morning. The yeah. rush, rushing in the morning took a toll on me. It has been great. Can, I, I want to talk about that for a second because yeah. I don't know if you <laughs> realize like, the rush teachers go through in the morning just to get ready to like be at school and teach their children. Are, are you noticing like a difference now? I am. I went I went to this um, volleyball thing for my daughter just a minute ago. And someone told me, I thought you were your daughter's cousin. And they see me all the time. And I said, 
Oh, thank you. I said it's been me having to be locked up and just <laughs> yes. ten years old. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> nice. the hustle and bustle, you know, and I'm sure Mike, because he's the mental health person, and you too. Like, like y'all, y'all know that the heart rate and you rushing and rushy, rushy, rushy. I'm sure it, 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 it does a strain on your body and your health. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And one of the things like even before we got out of school, I would talk to teachers, especially those that were parents. Like if you can if you can do it, get up at extra 20 minutes, 30 minutes earlier than you wake up your kids and actually sit down and drink your coffee and not drink it to go on the way out the door or sit down and listen to music or read a devotional or, you know, whatever it is where you have that few minutes to yourself. Because that darting out the door in the morning, I, I like I said, I, I my children are grown now, but I did it myself. You know, my um, when I was teaching, my kids were in middle school, then high school, and you know, high school here starts at like seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, so, you know, we're getting up at like five thirty, and it's like rush, rush, rush out the door, mm -hmm. and then I feel bad because I'm like, did we even say good morning? You know, <laughs> did I kiss them goodbye? I know. <laughs> It's a lot. It takes a thing totally out mentally because, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. What I was going to say is like with the, with the slowing things down and being at home, that time that you would have normally spent driving, I tell people to use that time for something that they, you know, if you have 15, 20, 45 minute commute, that's that time that you can use, you know, it's basically like getting time back. Right. So that's that time that you could use to either like sit down and actually have breakfast with your family yeah. <laughs> instead of di diving straight into work. Or one of the things I loved seeing was seeing all of the families going out for walks and yeah. families going out riding. But like that was a beautiful thing to me. <laughs> yeah. And I almost, you know, the rush for me was mentally wearing on me. Mm -hmm. I live in Atlanta where you can easily sit in traffic. At my last job, I was in traffic an hour and a half each way. I was in traffic three mm -hmm. hours. Oh and um, it wasn't that it was, it was only like 20 miles away, but the traffic, it was mm -hmm. just the traffic. Mm -hmm. And even in my new job, I'm about 30 minutes, which is much, much better. Mm -hmm. But the, but the mental to toil of getting the kids ready, Fighting with them in the morning to get them up, get them ready, get them fed, get their lunch, make sure their homework, mm -hmm. and taking them all to their schools, getting to my job, and sitting there so I don't have to do that is get it has opened up my world to like, whoo, yeah, load off of me. <laughs> A load, it's crazy. Diana says, Big time, having my mornings to myself has been so helpful to setting a better tone for the day. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What are you guys? So, you know, we've talked about like the mental health aspect of you know having that time what are some of the things that you did that you that you look back on like over this last three to four months what are some of the things that you've done that you said mm, maybe i shouldn't have done that maybe i should have done this to kind of protect my mental health i think i said it earlier was sitting at desk all day and not using the bathroom not taking breaks um like it, my day would just things would just go like this and i felt like everything was my like was something i had to fix and i think that just the stress of that like i have to fix it i got to make sure think my the teachers have what they need to be able to um to teach like they need to teach or i need to help them i need to fix fix it and mm -hmm. that's why i had to get in my mind about crisis teaching because i was trying to make it like a normal school day and it wasn't and so um, for me, like I had to set a schedule where I was like, okay, my alarm would go off and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm leaving my area and I had my space where I worked and I'm leaving my area and just doing something else, whether it was making lunch for the kids or going outside right. and breathing, you know, um, I had to do that for myself because I could see it wearing on me just physically. Um, by the end of the day, I was like really agitated with everybody in my house because I just was at the computer all day. Um, and that wasn't good for me. It wasn't good for my family. And I had to, I had to set some boundaries for myself and work. What about you, Meredith? Um, hey, Simone. <laughs> uh, 
One of my one of my friends that I met at the teacher self care conference. <laughs> friends for life. Uh, I saw myself um, on you know Nita. I know that we're both like on Instagram, and yeah. it was easy to compare yourself to other teachers out there and how hard they were working and how they were just reinventing. Well, I don't know what they were. I mean, they just were working so hard and I just felt like, gosh, I, I'm not measuring up. I'm not doing this right. I'm not like that parent over there, like that teacher yeah. over there. And mm -hmm. getting rid of that comparisonitis was something that I wish I had done sooner. Yeah. So. Yeah. What about you, Erica? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was just creating that structure. It, it was a different kind of structure for my day. Mm -hmm. um, because it was easy, um, you know, and finding like times where I'm like, okay, this would be the time that I'm normally at this school. So yeah. what do I do with this time? You know, um, and I've, there were several kids that, you know, you get close to people, kids, mm -hmm. teachers, where I'm like, checking on them constantly yeah. and like, okay, everything for school. So I, I essentially, I became like a mama bear yeah. trying to make sure that other people were okay. You yeah. know, like yeah. you don't need anything. Okay, I can support you, you know, from my house, you know, <laughs> um, there's a family that I really got close to and they were going, kids were going to a private school. I'm like, have they got their Chromebooks yet? Have they gotten, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to yeah. on other people. Mm -hmm. And as much as I want that, I'm like, there's only so much I know that I can do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, kind of creating that structure, doing the check-in without feeling the need to, like you were saying um, earlier, kind of like wanting to fix stuff for people, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. okay, maybe it's not my job to call the school to find it. It's, they're not my kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But just, I, you know, I like I genuinely wanted people to still feel some success during that time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and because I know it's stressful and I know it's difficult, and I've I've worked with families that have four, five, six children at home. Mm -hmm. One of the families that I worked with, there there was um, seven children, um, and five of them are school age. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. I gotta help mom, you know. So, yeah. But but that that not taking the weight of that. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of pull myself back so that I wouldn't take the weight of that. Yeah. And I think like Joy had a really good question. She said, thank you for this. How have you organized yourself to feel that you're not wasting time with so many changing details and stress? Have you set any goals and priority? Uh, for me, I I am not on social media. Like, like I'm not on the Instagram like that because it just consumes. It's too much. Like I'll get on when I have to, um, but I don't really get on it because I feel like it takes me away from what I have to do. So I have started, I'm looking right here on my desk. Um, I've started like a notepad of like what I have to do for the day. And that and like, I have to check it out, um, check off things. Um, I need to get a planner, but like, these are the, like, that's what helps me because if I don't have a list like the night before of what I need to do for the next day, then I'll just sit around and like not do what I need to do. What about you ladies? I'm the same. Like I have to have, like I have a notebook of things I have to get done. And so I write it down. Otherwise I'll forget. I think I have a slight case of uh, ADHD. So like if it, if I don't write it down, it, it goes away. And then I'll like wake up at two o'clock in the morning and be like, Oh, I forgot to do this. You know, something I forgot to do. So like I have to write it down. Um, and I, I do post-its for So when I, I, it's something that it's something for me that like I write down everything I have to do on a post-it. And when I crumble it up, it's like, yes, like I did that. I'm like, yeah. I'm pull it up yeah. and done. And so for me, that's what I have to have. I have to have like a notebook and like some posters. And these people that call me. Yeah. What about you, um, Erica? How do you get through what you need to get done? Um, I am also a post-it person. <laughs> um, I keep, keep a notebook with um, things. Like I said, I, can't, I do my best to keep my day structured. So like I start my day walking my dogs and then just going for a walk. Um, like I was mentioning, kind of getting some time back when we first were basically stuck at home for lack of better words, I kind of looked around at first, like, well, what am I going to do? And then look a little bit closer. Like I have all of these books that I've been meaning to read. Some of them are work related, like, you know, related to my work, whether I'm, you know, whether it's teaching, whether it's in regard to mental health. Um, but then some things that are just interesting to me, um, 
so I, you know, the beginning part of my day was more laid back, relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then I actually start working like mm -hmm. 11, 12 o'clock. So mm -hmm. then I know okay, I've got my full, now I'm ready to produce. Yeah, I like that. That's a good work idea. Out. People ask me like, what time do you get off? But you know, because I may be working until like seven or eight o'clock, but I'm like, I had my whole first part of my day to myself. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good that's a good way to do it. I mean, I think during this time, like if if COVID's taught us nothing, is that nothing what we thought was important isn't like those people who are very strict on you started, you know, at school, like if you don't sign in by eight o'clock, you're late, even if it's eight oh one and you yeah. like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It yeah. really doesn't matter. Get the work done. And I think a lot of people thought that teachers, like you have to be in person to teach. Mm -hmm. And what this has shown to people is that you can, if you have time to plan and do it right, you can teach from home yeah. and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need more time next time and it's not crisis teaching, but mm -hmm. we need to do it. Corin says, yes, I love my to-do wall, put tasks on post-it notes, put them on the wall, marking them off as I go. I might have to do that. Teach and take time for you says I have to write a list of things to do and check them off. Mm -hmm. Tony says comparison is the thief of joy. I agree. I agree. Like I, I don't, I don't. Social media is like a double edged sword. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. great to meet people, but mm -hmm. it's very easy for you to say, well, why do they get to do this and I don't? And I just mm -hmm. realize like the truth is usually like. It's not what is portrayed on social media. So I have to remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before we go, um, I want to make sure, what do you want every teacher to remember like during this time in protecting your piece? If you could give someone one piece of advice, what would it be? And we'll start with whoever wants to start. Go ahead. I'll go. Um, I think enjoy this time of just being, like we said earlier, being on your break because it's going to go by fast and then you're going to wish that you would have done so much during this time. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's something for me that to say, I'm definitely going to like take this time, enjoy my break. When work starts, it's going to start and it's going to yeah. start a hundred percent, you know, so just take this time and just um, enjoy your time off. Enjoy not having to log on, you yeah. know, love it. Next. I would say do do um, spend time in reflection. Um, you know, I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but you know, what do what do I love about me? Mm -hmm. What are my strengths? Mm -hmm. What are some of my goals? What do I want to accomplish this this week, this month, this year? Mm -hmm. um, and as it relates to me as a person, and not necessarily, or you as a person, and not necessarily as a teacher. That's right. You know, think think broader than who you are as a, as in your role in the classroom, yeah. and just yeah. you know, like I said, do some reflection. Love yeah. that. I love it, Meredith. Um, I echo what you all say, and I also would add um, just really having that morning routine in place. Mm -hmm. you kind of that whatever you want to do, if you want to lay by the pool or just chill. So whatever you want to do, um, just get your get your mind right for the day. And mm -hmm. what you were saying about loving yourself, Erica, um, like I find that affirmations and um, journaling and meditating in the morning just to get my mind right before I even look at my to do list. Right. Um, right. It just makes me feel so much more positive. Mm -hmm. And um, even though we're all sleeping in a little bit more during the summer, like um, just yeah. take a little time for you in the morning to, to just be like focused for the day and uh, you don't have to be perfect at it, but just get some positivity or coffee or tea or whatever and start your day off um, just intentionally would be that's some, something that I'm working on and um, I highly recommend it so. absolutely and I, and I think for me my biggest advice is just to do you like it's just like like it's not a time for you to compare and to say yeah. why it's so it's such such doing it's to do you it's to ultimately figure out what makes you happy and do more of it. Yes. So I want to thank right. you guys, you ladies, for coming on. If you can put where people can find you in the comments, 
um, so that people can get it. Guys, every Sunday at four o'clock, we will be doing teacher self-care talks. Um, we have a whole slate um, and I can't remember what next week is. I have my paper somewhere around here, but I'll post it. But every week at four, every Sunday at four o'clock, we'll have these talks. And the hope is that teachers will really get to talk out kind of the things around self-care and what it means to be a teacher. Um, also, to let you guys know, July 1st, registration for our annual Day of Teacher Self-Care opens. Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be digital. Um, and it's going to be a great way for us to connect with teachers from around the world. The way we're doing it this year is that registration will be open for 14 days and then it will close. We will not register anybody the last two weeks. So if you are going, you come on um, and it'll be a great event. So thank you, ladies. Put uh, Did you guys put where they can find you? Put it in. Um, I don't know how to do that. Go to comments. Actually, tell everybody where they can find you and then I'll put it in there. So okay. go ahead and start. I, you can find me at Love Teach Plus on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. Love Teach Bless, right? Yes. Okay, I'll put yours in there. Thank you, Fran. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Erica, where can they find you? It's um, Teaching with Mental Health in Mind. It's on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, I'm putting yours in now. Teaching with Mental Health in Mind. Mental Health in Mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Meredith, where can we find you? Uh, the Transformed Teacher. You can find that, um, that's my website, thetransformedteacher.com, and that's my handle on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, well, transformedteacher.com. And guys, you guys can find me at www.theeducatorsroom.com uh, or Teacher Self Care. We are so excited. Yeah, thank you for putting that in there. They are so excited. It's gonna be great. Y'all have a great one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.